Hi guys, it's Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design. As you can tell by my voice, I'm a little under the weather. Um, about two weeks ago, I came down with COVID and I've just been recovering. So to all my followers who have been asking for a new video and you know telling me not to give up, thank you so much for the encouragement. I've been really excited to come back with a new tutorial. Today's video is a special request for a juice box. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to make it. So let's go. All right, so first we're gonna start out with just a blank canvas in Adobe Illustrator. And I have a reference image here of what I wanna create, this juice box. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a rectangle that is approximately the size of this juice box so I can get an idea of the width and the height. Now that I have this box, I can click on shape and it'll give me the dimension. Sometimes it doesn't always show up here, so I'll click on shape and it'll give me those pixel dimensions, which is what I'm aiming for when I go to extrude this shape. And I think the best approach is to start from the top of the shape and extrude down so that I can get the little imperfections that a juice box has because it's a rectangle, but it kind of, um, squishes in. It's not perfectly uh, hard. It's cardboard. So I'm going to try to replicate that by making a perfectly imperfect rectangle. I'll take this rectangle now and figure out maybe what the depth would be. It's hard to tell from this reference image. Um, if you needed it to be exact, you could do some real crazy measurements. I'm just going to go with what I think a juice box um, top would look like. So now I'm going to bevel these edges in because you can see that they're curved. It's not pointy on the ends. And I'm going to make it even take it one step further. And I'm going to add these anchor points here on the insides. And then I'm going to take the bezier curve and I'm going to um, extend it so that it's smooth. So then when I nudge in, it's going to make that indentation. I'm gonna do that on all of the sides. I'm doing about three nudges from after I pulled the bezier curve. All right, and that will be the rectangle shape. Um, now I'm going to go to 3D and materials window. Um, I go back to my rectangle and see that I need it to be about 453 pixels long. So um, I click back on my shape and then I go and click extrude and I put, what was that number? Three, 453. And this is always in inches, so I have to put 453 pixels and it'll make the conversion for me, super easy. So now I'm gonna rotate it, get a good idea of how it looks. Um, that should be the front. And then for the top section, I'm gonna add a bevel. So I'll toggle bevel and I'll choose round because I want it rounded. And the top that I was thinking of the top is actually the bottom. So I'll rotate it back around so I have the top and I can compare with my source. Um, so here I'm gonna adjust the bevel. I don't need it to be so wide. I don't need it to be so high. Maybe a little bit higher than that. All right, I think that's good. Um, the other thing that I just noticed is that we have a hole for a straw. Um, so since I already have this made how I want, um, I'm gonna toggle this eyeball here to lose the visibility. And then I'm gonna draw a circle for a straw. Um, that looks pretty good. And then I'll choose a different color so I can see where I'm putting it. But now I'm gonna put it in this corner here. And I'll select both of these items, go over to Pathfinder and do minus front. And that will cut out that hole. And then I toggle my eyeball back on. And now there should be a hole at the top when I look up there. There is, look at that. And it even has a little bit of a bevel. I don't know that I love that, but I think it will be easily disguised with the flap that we'll have to put on top. 
I think three nudges is a little aggressive, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to play with my shape here. I might change this a little bit. Nudge it back out. And there's nothing that says they have to be symmetrical either. Sometimes the imperfections make it look more realistic. And it's okay if you don't get it right the first time. You can definitely go back and tweak and change things and add holes as you need and play with it until it looks convincing. It's all about looks here, which is fun, you know? What's inside sometimes doesn't matter. <laughs> that's not with people, that's just with shapes. All right, so now I have this rectangle. I'm going to copy it because I want it to be pretty accurate um, when I create that top flap. So I'm gonna delete the 3D and materials because we don't need it but I do need to um, keep this hole. <coughs> so now I'm gonna draw a rectangle that slices this in half. Um, if I click on this tool, then it'll show me those little anchor points. There's a more mathematical way to do it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then from here, subtract and then click the intersect so that it cuts it in half. And then I have a replica of this top piece up here. I'm going to extrude so that I can add a little bit of depth because this is a thick piece of cardboard, right? So then I'll choose a depth of like 0.1 inches. Let's see how that looks. That might be a little thick, so maybe 0 0.07 inches for the depth. And the other thing is this edge is kind of rough around the edges. So if I turn off my 3D materials for a minute, then I can roughen up the edge a little bit. I'm going to roughen up the edge and just draw some organic shapes. Um, if it needs, for your model, if it needs to be more of a, um, All right, so I drew the line, it's snapping to curves. So what I'll do is I'll go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and I'll go to Roughen. It would help if I chose a color. All right. I'll go to Roughen. You can see it makes it really jagged. So I'll take down the size, detail, I'll increase to like 80 and hopefully this will give me a little bit more of a jagged edge. Just playing with these settings, I tend to have the size really, really small and the detail really, really high, but let's see. How are we looking there? That's pretty jagged. I'm happy with that. We'll go to Object, Expand Appearance, and that makes sure that that effect that I applied is turned into live paths. Now that we have them overlapped and I have the placement the way that I want, I'll come here and minus again. So now it's got that edge, and if I turn on 3D and materials, hopefully it looks more like our shape. And I still think it might be a little too thick, so I'm actually gonna go down to 0 0.05 inches. Cool, cool, cool. All right, and this hole here should make up for the fact that the bevel hole over here just isn't, it isn't looking how I want. So it'll be good. All right, now I need to create these triangle flaps over on the side. I think I have a way to do it, so let's try, let's try it out. We're learning together here, we're learning together. So I'm gonna drag this rectangle over because the way that this flap is, it's like pinched and then folded and then around the edges. We need to try to replicate that as best we can. So we already have that top piece. I am going to draw a rectangle here. I'm just gonna change the color so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to bring the rectangle up there. All right, so that gives us these two shapes, kind of a feel for how this is gonna look. Resize those. And now I'm going to make this a triangle, but it's not a perfect triangle. So it's not a big deal if it doesn't look exact. 
We do want it to line up with our friend over here too. So I'm gonna bring this example. That's a triangle. Maybe these tabs are a little too long. And then maybe this portion needs to be extended a little bit because it's now appearing like it's not exactly halfway. Like it meets in the middle and then folds over. So it needs to be more like a two thirds to a one third. And again, I'm just choosing colors. The colors don't matter. We replace those later with textures and graphics. So I'm just trying to get a good feel of how this is supposed to look. Okay, so the triangles here, and I kind of did need that rectangle because it looks like most of it folds over. There's this flap and then a little tiny triangle. So I'm going to scrunch that up. I'll delete this anchor point. There kind of might need to be like a whole strip here to, to make that look convincing. All right, so I'm clicking A on my keyboard and coming here to make this not so perfect looking. Same with this one, just like the slightest little curve on these edges. And same with this, just a little bit of a curve. And if we need to make another little strip to lie on top, I think that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna draw the piece that I think would be in the middle, in the center, and then extrude. I'm gonna choose a similar thickness as this guy, 0 0.05 inches. Cool, there's our strip. And then I'll wanna make another strip so that these can connect later on. And you know what, I'm just gonna take the ragged edge from this guy and we'll make a copy of it. Here we go. Saving some time. Yeah, we'll cut those in the middle and then this will be my tab over here. I still need to extrude this and do 0 0.05. I need to extrude this 0 0.05. And I need to extrude this one. Oops, 0 0.05. And I think that's all of the pieces that we need to recreate because these will be mirrored on the other side of the box. So let's load it into Dimension.